Well, welcome. Um, session's only half an hour long, so I will get um, started straight away. But actually, before I introduce myself, um, I will throw it open to you. A um, little question for you. I'm going to ask you to put it in chat, a one or two sentence story of what happened when someone's need was met. I've put, I've put that, that, that question into chat, a one or two sentence story of what happened when your team or organisation met someone's need. So just give you a minute or thereabouts uh, to uh, chat back your one or two sentence story. So I just think about, you know, that's a recent example of uh, when a need was met and what was great about it. The feedback was overwhelming and encouraging. It was inspiring to go on. That was nice. And for those that's joining, uh, a one or two sentence story in chat of what happened when your team or organisation met someone's need. We felt joy. That was a nice one. So that's the that's the happy ending to the story. Um, I've got um, one more joining. I'll count to 10 slowly and then we'll finish this little exercise. Have we got any more one or two sentence stories of what happened when you met someone's need? I could have asked you what happened for the customer um, when you met their need. Uh, so um, what we're actually leading us towards is um, looking at our work in terms of outcomes. I mean, if you've, if you've been following my work, you know that everything I do tends to be about outcomes. Um, so my, uh, my um, second book, Agenda Shift, was about looking at change and transformation from, from a perspective of outcomes. So outcome-oriented uh, change and transformation is a good summary of what that book was about. Um, and my most recent book, Right to Left, was an outcome-oriented view on the whole Lean Agile landscape. So a book that for practitioners was interesting for its very um, resolute stance about looking at the whole Lean Agile landscape from an outcome-oriented perspective, not backlog first, but outcome first. And it, and it completely changes the way you look at things. Um, and it's a book that, that starts gently enough and takes you on that journey um, it makes it accessible enough that, that people have been giving it to their managers, to sponsors, and so on. So, you know, it's written uh, to uh, you know, actually to, to appeal to two quite, uh, quite different audiences. Thanks to the, the stance that it takes and using outcomes as the way of organizing everything. Um, so just to, um, again, put in chat, I'm not going to use slides today. I'd much rather be looking at you uh, than looking at a slide. And um, you don't have to look at me, you can look at each other. Um, but I, I find it a much more um, interesting and rewarding experience when I do it this way. But I put some uh, links out in chat. Um, the first one is my definition of done, someone's need was met. Uh, and that just links back to that first exercise that we did. Um, agendashift.com slash mics, you're sure you can guess uh, what's there. Uh, agendashift.com slash about, so that really does tell the whole the story of um, what we're um, up to here. So the talk is cleanish strategy. Now I'll explain the cleanish bits in a bit, um, but you know, the strategy bit first. Um, Strategy isn't that well served by the by a lot of agile frameworks, agile tools. You know, I, I think it's um, something that's misunderstood or underappreciated in agile. You know, very often, um, you know, the, the strategy is given to effectively given to a team, and then they attribute their success to their wonderful agile process. No, fine to celebrate the agile process, a good thing to celebrate the agile process, but perhaps we should be giving a little bit more credit. Um, to the strategy that caused that team to be formed, for that investment to be made, uh, for the you know products and so on to be um, you know conceived and 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 all the rest of it that goes goes with strategy. Um, two um, famous quotes spring to mind. The first is by Russ Akov: "The righter we do the wrong thing, the wronger we become." You know, and just focusing on process without thinking about why we're doing what we're doing is you know it's not a recipe for really for success. Another one that's thrown back at you is Peter Drucker, culture eats strategy for breakfast. You know, can those both be true? And I honestly think they are, but I actually think that we need to think about culture and strategy at the same time. And, um, you know, if you look at agenda shift, that really is the strategy of, tra uh, the strategy of transformation of, of culture. Um, and, um, you know, in our workshops, we bring, we bring these two things together. 
Um, but we're not going to be looking at transformation strategy today. We are going to be stepping back and looking much more broadly about strategy from point of view of um, positioning. Uh, one that leads us into conversations about ways of working and culture, though. So we, we try to keep these things um, nicely integrated, properly integrated. Um, so, you know, three, four years ago, you know, I was, I was out there making a splash with an approach to transformation that takes a strategic view, but is about lean agile, it's about ways of working and so on. And a question I asked in the Agenda Shift book is what happens when you take those lean agile bits out? And I didn't have an answer to that question when the book was published, but now we do. And it turns out you know, the bits you need to take out and replace with other things aren't that many. Things like the our true north statement, which is a, a statement of um, the kind of outcomes you'd expect to enjoy as an organization or as, as teams uh, when we are you know, doing well with lean and, agile, lean and agile things, when that's working at its best for us. Um, and things like the agenda shift assessment. And those tools are very easily swapped out for other things. And the, the, the tool we've had a lot of fun with is the outside in strategy review, which you're gonna get some sort of a chance to, to play with this a little uh, today. We don't have much time, but a, a, a small chance to play. And that's taken us into areas like OKR and product strategy and things like that as well. So we've, we've had uh, a lot of fun with it. Um, so we're going to go straight to a couple of little breakout exercises um, that, that you're at the start of this outside in journey with, you know, and the outside in strategy means you start with your relationships with your customers and that gets you thinking about positioning and, and, and so on. And then you work your way in to the organization, to your capabilities, to your people and so on and, and, and contrast that with outside, outside inside out strategy sorry which is about starting with the capabilities that you have and developing them so we're going to start from the outside with the customer and uh, the question you're going to be asking answering is what's happening when we're reaching the right customers meeting their strategic needs and what new stories could you tell and we've you know we, we played with stories at the beginning at the beginning of this um, session meeting their strategic needs now that that strategic needs phrase does need a little bit of explanation It's their needs your strategy so what's happening when you're meeting their needs and it's the needs that you are prioritizing because those are the needs that say something about your mission your purpose your strategy and so on um, so what i'm going to do we're going to we're going to move you into breakout rooms and um you're going to spend four minutes on that question and now you'll find it helpful to be as concrete as you can in your answers. You don't have to give away you know, anything that's confidential about your customers, but what's happening in that relationship between your organization and your customer when you are meeting their strategic needs? And you can think about the kind of services that you offer, the products that you offer, what the customers are able to do, and so on. Now, four minutes, it's not very long, and then we'll come back with some follow-up questions. Um, so Jessica's gonna send you out for those four minutes and uh, the, the text that I put in chat, she's gonna send out to your rooms as well so that you have that as a reminder. Um, so I will see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. Uh, you probably realize that four minutes is nowhere near enough uh, for that question. Uh, in fact, um, you, know, you can unpack that question quite a bit and you can literally spend a whole workshop session just on that one question. Um, even the when, for example, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a conversation, just that one word, for example, um, is, is a conversation in its own right. Um, how I'm going to send you straight back out to a um, second breakout. This is your, your second of two uh, with these questions. Um, so what stops that? And, or, or in other words, what gets in the way of all those good things that you've been talking about? What would you like to have happen with respect to those obstacles? Then what happens and then what happens? So we're going deeper and deeper into uh, outcomes um, from those uh, obstacles that you first identified. Um, so um, what stops that? What gets in the way? What would you like to have happen? Then what happens? Then what happens? And all of that is with, relative to all the great things that you talked about in that in that first breakout. Uh, so once again, Jessica's gonna send you out for four minutes and she'll send you that text once you're there. Okay. Good, um, welcome back. 
Um, so I um, will explain, you know, what's just happened there with those those two uh, two breakouts. And um, before I do, um, just mention we have only nine minutes left. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, do put them into chat, and uh, we will try to answer them um, at the end. Uh, I'm told it's okay for us to run on um, after the formal close of the talk, but we will we'll, we'll officially close at the top of the hour. Uh, and the the next um, sessions for the conference start at ten past. Um, we are allowed to run past ten minutes if you uh, aren't intending to go to the to the following sessions. But I will um, make sure that the you know the formal part of the the uh, the session is is, is done in, in time. So what just happened? Um, well, you've kind of seen a mashup of two tools. Um, so um, the first tool is the outside in strategy review. And the, uh, the the outside in strategy review uh, you've 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 touched on um, is in that first link. Or there's a template at the first link and some questions. And and the questions get, correspond to five layers: customer, organization, product, platform, and team. So you see, we start on the outside and work our way in. So what's happening when we're reaching the right customers, meeting their strategic needs? That's the question you answered. And then when we're meeting those strategic needs, what kind of organization are we? Through what products and services are we meeting those strategic needs? When we're that kind of organization meeting those strategic needs, delivering those products and services, what are the defining stroke critical capabilities that make it all possible? And when we're achieving all of the above, what kind of teams are we? So you can see we are you know, starting very much with the position of the organization with respect to the outside world, but increasingly, you know, we're asking the questions about, you know, who do you want to be? What kind of process do we want to have? What, you know, how, how, how do we want this to look? Um, so that blend of um, strategy in terms of position, but strategy also in terms of culture. So both Akov and uh, Drucker can be right, uh, you know, and doing the right things and doing them right, uh, and paying attention to culture before um, it eats strategy for breakfast. So you know, having, having our cake and eat it, shall we, shall we say. Um, the cleanish part now I will I will explain. So the cleanish part is uh, that's inspired by a clean language. And the second link is the link to 15 minute photo, which is our clean language inspired um, coaching game. Uh, there are there's a menu of questions that you can ask more than the, than you had in this um, exercise. What ties them together is this idea of them being clean, meaning those questions don't allow you the, the coach or the questioner to impose your assumptions on the conversation. You're giving a chance to draw out what other people are thinking. You're helping them build models in, in their minds and so on. And in fact, the way the, the, uh, the questions are asked um, in the outside in uh, strategy questions make as few assumptions as possible. And they, again, they build on what comes before. So you get this, this, this model building um, thing happening. If you look closely, the assumptions that it makes are really small. They are that, first of all, that you want to talk about reaching the right customers, meeting their strategic needs. I think most, most organizations wanting to do a strategy review would probably say, yes, that's a sensible assumption to make. Um, there are also some very interesting assumptions around when. You know, is there, is there a time frame that we can talk about where sensibly we can get to where we want to be? And at the same time as us trying to get to that position, perhaps our competitors are trying to occupy that same position as well. And it starts to get very interesting from that point of view. But also thinking across those layers and all those different capabilities and so on, can we, can we, can we get it all lined up uh, in, in that uh, time frame as well? And um, you know, one way of helping to achieve this and, and to make sure that we're all aligned is to actually get the right people into the room for that strategy review. Um, I'm very uninterested in helping a you know just a top leader come up with a strategy that's going to be imposed on the rest of the organization i'm i'm you know big on participation whole room exercises and so on getting um you know thinking about um who who best speaks to each of those layers and getting multiple people speaking into them uh getting working groups together getting feedback to going going and and all these kinds of things um and the the outside in structure make sure that you pay attention to the right kinds of things and get the right kind of um, representation in the room and, and so on. Um, stepping back from all of that, the tools, um, a couple, couple of patterns. Um, the first one uh, we call the I do pattern. I do here stands for ideal obstacle outcome. 
And uh, if you think about the two breakouts that you did, that's exactly what you did. You thought about what was happening when you're reaching the right customers and so on. And you thought about the obstacles in the way and then the outcomes that are hiding behind those obstacles. And what we're doing is modeling a landscape that takes us from where we are now with all the frustrations involved in, in, in where we are now and where we want to get to and, you know, some of the places in between. So, you know, we start to get a um, strategic view, um, uh, some helps us get some direction, helps us prioritize where we want to focus our attention first and, and so on. So this is proper strategy, not just a visioning, uh, visioning um, exercise. And the second pattern is called, um, oh, I've got an old version of the link that says uh, just in time strategy. It should be right to left strategy. And that is focused on making sure the organization is really focused on capturing the learning about not just about its customers as you, as you do with Lean Startup, but also about itself as it goes through that process. So this is double loop learning built into the design of the organization. Make sure that very frequently we're asking the right questions about the experiments that we've just run, the experiments that are in progress, the ones that we plan to do, and what we're learning both about the outside world and about ourselves as we, as we go through that process. And, and if you've read the right to left book, you'll know that there's a, a, um, um, an outside in service delivery review to complement the strategy review to make sure those those questions are being asked about each of those uh, about each of those layers uh, so with two minutes left um, where might you use this stuff um, now one area we've been working hard at uh, for the last few months is okr um, there are lots of challenges with okr it's something that can be brilliant but you can be terrible and the trick is to not have the terrible version, have the brilliant version. And one big part of that is, well, where do those objectives come from? Now, there are other challenges as well that we do uh, address, but um, for today, it will do, you know, think hard about where those objectives are coming from. Are they just coming from, you know, the, uh, you know, some executives thoughts uh, in the shower that morning? Um, or are they coming through a particip you know, participatory conversations about where we want to get to? Um, and that, that um, you know, are serious about what our medium term goals are, uh, longer term objectives, the values of the organization and, uh, and so on and so on. And, you know, this works really well for that. Um, thinking also in, about this alignment thing, I've uh, talked about alignment between layers. Um, and, and again, this goes back to uh, the, the, the relevant chapter of the right to left book, this idea of wholeheartedness. Um, and it leads back to a, a quote from a Christopher, Christopher Alexander architecture book, uh, The Timeless Way of Building. Uh, Christopher Alexander, you may recognize as the you know, kind of the father of the patterns movement. You know, you're writing in the in the 80s, uh, working in architecture, but inspiring people in software development. It's, it's, it's kind of extraordinary. But then you look at his books and you realize that actually they're kind of deeply thoughtful books, philosophical books. And what he writes about architecture have some are amazing metaphors for um, the you know the working environment as well you know for uh, for organisation design. He talks about wholehearted buildings. I'm I realise that I want to be in the business of building wholehearted organisations, and that became um, the mission statement um, for Agenda Shift. And that's something I collaborated on with you know a, a number of. Um, uh, partners, people from the, our, our Slack community and so on. That's our mission statement that I've, I've shared with you there. It is now one minute to six uh, by this clock. It's been quite a, uh, quite a rush 30 minutes um, where you spent most of your time in, in those breakout rooms. Uh, I just want to say thank you for attending. Thank you especially for participating. I know um, it's hard work late on a Friday afternoon if you're based in Europe uh, to attend a Zoom session and to um, you know, have to participate in, in breakouts, all of that. But I hope you found that um, interesting and valuable. I've say, you know, shared a number of links in chat. And there's some final ones um, there for you now for you to uh, take a look at. I hope you captured some of them. Um, Jessica is going to make sure that the, uh, the log is saved um, for, um, for you to be able to re refer to uh, later. So we've got to six o'clock. Formally, the session is over, um, but I'm very happy to take uh, questions. Um, hopefully, we'll get those questions done by 10 past when some of you want to go off to your um, next session. Um, but I'm happy for, to stay for, for longer if, if necessary. Um, I don't know if there are any questions in chat. I don't know if Jessica has seen any, or um, we just do this open mic now for, um, you know, for the next few minutes. 
No, I didn't see any questions. I don't no. think so if people have them, they can write them in or say them out loud. Well, maybe we're done. I mean, that's fine. That's completely fine as well. But um, I don't mind questions. I don't mind hard questions. They're often the best ones. So. Uh... <laughs> I'll drop off likes, mate. Good to see you. Oh, I'm going to post the uh, link to the uh, strategy review template again. Uh, oh, yes. It... I have a question. Um, if, you, if you have a bit of time, I yeah, can... I will. I'll be. Yeah, ask the question while I'm hunting about for the uh, for the link. Yes. My audio dropped off a bit when you were talking a bit about OKRs. I've I've been doing quite a lot of research recently on them, and I've spoken to a few friends, and nobody seems to have mastered setting them properly everyone says we use them but like we we're not good at them yeah and I, I, yeah well, I, I actually have a list of um five, five if you look at the wholehearted okr workshop description a list of five um challenges with okr um and you can see how easy it is to for it to go wrong so defining objectives that are relevant meaningful competitive gen compelling generative um, so, um, you know, we need to do a lot better than we need, to, we, we know, 10% more sales this quarter. You know, um, that's management by objectives uh, that was discredited. Um, it's a, you know, you start managing by um, those kind of metric driven objectives. Um, it very quickly becomes a source of dysfunction and things can go very badly, very quickly um, when you manage that way. So you need objectives that actually encourage people to come up with great ideas that are in keeping with the values of the organization. And, um, you know, we think a strategy review that where, you know, it that, that involves a lot of participation, a lot of enga engagement is the right place to um, start those conversations. How to measure to the metrics bit, how to measure um, your um, key results or your objectives in ways that will guide and stretch appropriately and not take you to the, uh, the dark side as we saw with MBO. Uh, how, where the key results going to come from? Where the innovation is going to come from? Now we've, we, you know, we, you know, um, you know, we've leveraged, you know, uh, ideas from elsewhere and through our own experiments, you know, realizing that actually those two questions are related. And if you see my hashtag two MBM thing, and I'll post a link to that while I'm again while I'm uh, talking. Um, meaning before metric, measure before method. So the meaning before metric is clear enough. Uh, you know, we need to have those serious talks about what we're trying to do before we start to think about how we measure it. But actually, those measures can guide um, the ideation process. And the more the more different indications you can think of um, that your um, objective or your key result is 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 actually working, um, those can point to some maybe not total solutens, but you know at least some uh, fifteen percent solutions. Um, you know, and do enough of those, you're going to start to, um, you know, you're going to start to make some real progress. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Great question from Anne. Uh, can you say a bit more about those right people? Um, I um, will talk about the right people externally, first of all. Um, this is an example, I say I like hard questions. Um, someone saved me, spared me this question at a meetup thinking it was, it was embarrassing, but I was very happy to answer the question. The right, the right people are, you know, um, that's what your strategy is all about. You know, what is your, who, who is your mission to reach? And, um, under, you know, understanding the, the needs of the people that you want to reach is key to being successful. Successful for you and successful to them. And um, a large part of that is something stable, you know, lasting, you know, your, you know who your mission is too. Um, but there are strategic considerations as well. How are we going to grow in a particular area? You know, are there new countries we should be, you know, we should be growing into? Are there some, you know, um, types of user, types of customer we haven't considered or haven't considered well enough or haven't considered their, considered their needs well enough and so on. Um, but it's really helpful to identify who they are. Um, you know, things like personas, for example, you know, can be a, a, a useful tool for, for this kind of thing and, and where they are and how we're going to reach them as well. Um, and, uh, you know, these are you know, very necessary questions to be asking early on. When I did um, government digital work, uh, we found this was um, very useful. Um, and um, even for one set of, you know, high level, you know, functions that we provided, services that we provided, you know, there are a number of very different personas that we needed to properly understand 
um, and understand their needs, both their needs in terms of what they wanted to achieve, but in, also in terms of things like accessibility as well, um, which is a very important consideration for um, government work and a lot, I guess a lot of um, non-profit work and, and things like that and so on. Um, so yeah, that's a, an important question. The right people internally as well as an yeah, also, in, yeah, also a very two one question. question. <laughs> exactly. And um, when we uh, we look at the outside in service um, delivery review, um, you know, who best represents those different layers? And um, it's great when it's actually more than one person. It's great when one person can be a mentor to another and so on. And you. Um, what we're actually doing is by the back door doing sociocracy. You know, we're thinking about who represents each, each circle and we're thinking about how we can link these different groups with multiple people and um, you know, ideally with, with growth opportunities for at least one of those people in that relationship as well as growth opportunities for those people as they speak to um, the service delivery review or other forums that they represent. Um, now a service delivery review is only a small meeting, you know, you might get, you might be, um, you know, six people, 10 people, something like that, but a strategy review, you know, I like to do it big room. Um, and, uh, but the same considerations apply. They need to be representative and at least three levels of seniority. You know, if it's just a senior meeting, you know, um, you're not doing anything to challenge the group think. Now you do need to know um, who you need to hear from people that are on the ground. Um, you need to hear from people who have to manage the, you know, the, the, the balances and the imbalances, you know, the middle managers and so on. They, uh, you know, they don't have a very, they get very good press, but they have a difficult job. To, I, I was one, so I'm sympathetic to them. Um, you know, you, you need all these people in the room. Um, and, um, you know, what underpins everything we do in a gender shift land is agreement on outcomes. Once we've got agreement on outcomes, you know, we've got people committed to finding a way forward. And that is so different to starting with a solution and persuading people and all that kind of solution driven change that I think is just completely broken. Um, you know, we describe a gender shift as the, as, as the whole hearted and outcome oriented engagement model. And we're using engagement model to define a category that's separate from change management. Um, and you know we need to put that behind us certainly the, the agile community desperately needs to put old old school change management behind it it's an embarrassment and i, and I, I you know i don't mince my words on, on on that um it needs to be a participatory process where people have the chance to participate in strategy and all the important um, feedback loops of the organization i'm not saying that everyone should be at every meeting that's that that, that, that clearly wouldn't work but um we need some um some models for for representation um and you know big room has its place circles and sociocracy circular hierarchy whatever you want to call it um has has uh, you know also also has a role to play as well it's it turns out to be a very useful way of looking at your organization a bit more actually more practical than the spotify model um it's much more flexible and um you can actually think of the spotify model as an implementation of sociocracy and then realize that the real cool stuff is actually in sociocracy yeah so I hope that answered that question. Yeah. Any more? Well, that's very good timing. It's nine minutes past six. So some of you want to go to the uh, the next session. We're really glad to uh, to have you. Thank you, and uh, talk to you soon. <laughs>